Welcome to Datify. Datify provides businesses the ability to create applications visually without writing any scripts and ensures these applications are automatically converted into code. In this video, I will show you how to create a simple CRUD website. That is a create, read, update, and delete website called Abuja directories. This will be done without writing any code whatsoever. So we will first create the read functionalities of the website. And in order to accomplish this, we will create a data model powered by the MySQL database, and we will call it directory. This will act as the data store for our directory listings. And then we will create two backend actions called get directories and get a single directory. Subsequently, we will move over to the design section of our application and create a user interface using Datafy's already made front-end components so that users can see and interact with what we have stored in our My MySQL database. Finally, we will build the app and publish it so that the world will see what we have accomplished. If you have not created an account, please proceed and create one. This will only take about a minute. So in this page, um, you are going to be provided a button to add an app and we're going to click it. And it's going to take us to this page where we are provided with a list of application templates to get started with. For now, we're going to choose the free template. So click the select button and then I'm going to call my app Abuja Directories. Datafy is going to take a few minutes to lay the foundation for our website. So let's wait for that to finish up before we proceed to create our first data model. All right, now that Datafy has laid the foundation for our application, we're going to move ahead and create a data model. So in Datafy, a data model is powered by a MySQL relational database management system. So in this system, our data is going to be stored in a structure called tables. So this table, we're going to have a row and we're going to have a column. Now each row represents a record of data that we're going to have saved. And each column is going to present the attributes of each record. So let's go ahead and create our first data model. So we're going to click the button add table. And then we're going to click the empty table option. So it's going to take a few seconds to create a table. Now let's rename it and call it directory. So it's going to take a few seconds to rename the table. So we're going to call it directory because we're going to save our directory listings in this table. For this project, I'm interested in saving different locations in the city of Abuja. And so we're going to give this table six attributes, name, description, image, category, and address. So we're going to click the plus button to add these following attributes. So the first one is name. So we're going to give it a data type. The data type is simply the type of information we want to have saved in this column. So for the name, we're going to choose a single line text. I'm going to click save. So just with some seconds, we'll click the plus button again. 
we're going to add the description. So we're going to use what we call the long text because we imagine that this description is going to have a lot of information about the directory or location. And then we're going to add another column called image. We're going to give data type URL. So this is going to save a link to the image of our location. So this image can be stored in Google, in Amazon's S3, can be stored in your location in the private server of yours. Provided it's a link, it has to be a valid link, and that's fine. So we're going to add another column called category. And this is also going to be a single line text. I'm going to click the save button. So we want our listings to be organized by categories. And then we're going to add the final column called address. So this is going to save the location or we want users to know how we're going to find this directory, this location. So this is where it's going to be saved. We've given our table a very distant structure. And so we want to populate the table with the, the things that we want our users to see when they come to our website, right? So. We're going to create a row and in order to do this, we're going to click the plus button. All right. So my, one of my favorite lounges in Abuja is called the Caribbean lounge. So we're going to add the Caribbean lounge. Um, we can just take a description from Google. Uh, it serves great cocktails, has live music, has karaoke. We can add it here. We can also take an image from Google and just copy an image address. And then for the category. So in this table, I plan to save restaurants, parks, and lounges and we're going to add some places to go you know for you know for the nightlife so we're gonna this is a very good restaurant in abuja so we're going to call it restaurant and then we can also take the address from google i'm going to just add it there i want to click the save button all right, so it's going to take me a minute to add the other items in this table. So just give me a minute. All right, so we've been able to create 12 rows, which consists of 12 different directory listings. And as you can see in the category column, each row has a category and I think for the purpose of this video, we're just going to have four different categories, uh, the restaurants, lounge, nightlife, and park. Now that we've created this data, now that we have where we're going to store the information that we need the user to see, we now have to find a way to bridge the gap between the user and what we have in the database, we need to create a communication channel. Now, Datafy provides what you call backend actions. So backend actions help to configure an endpoint in addition to many other things. But for this purpose, we need an endpoint. An endpoint creates a communication channel between the front end facing app and the back end. So I'm going to show you how to create a backend action to configure an endpoint. So we'll click on this button here. 
then we'll click on new action so we're going to call this action get directories now we'll click the enter button it's going to save then we'll click on add trigger and we'll click on endpoint and as you can see uh Dirify creates an endpoint for us with some default configuration so what's the next step the next step is to create a variable a variable is simply a unit of storage where we can temporarily save information, whether it's from the backend or from user input. So for this purpose, we need to have somewhere where we're gonna save the list of directories that we get from the backend. We need to save it somewhere temporarily so that the front end can display the information. For this purpose, we're going to create a variable, and this is how you create a variable. You click on the Add Variable button. Now, what kind of variable do we need for this information? For this, for this, for this too, for the for the get directories back in action, we need a collection kind of variable. So, a collection is simply the, a list of something, the list of data, and since we want to return a list of information from the back end. But I need the the type of variable to be a collection. And so let's just call the name of the variable directory listens. And then we're gonna select the model. I'm gonna the model is gonna be directory. And then we're gonna click save. Now in the endpoint configuration, we're gonna we're gonna configure the endpoint so that the response that we get from the endpoint call is going to be saved in the directory distance table um, variable. So we'll click on directory distance. And then we have to actually build a code so that Dutify can help us configure the endpoints in the back end. So we'll click on build code. Now this is going to take a few minutes to be done. All right. So now that the code has been built by Identify, we can now test the backend action we just created. Now, in order to test this action, we have to click the button Run Action. And then we we'll click the button Run in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Good. As you can see, we get the entire list of directories that we have in our database. Good. Now let's quickly create the second backend action that we need for the read functionality of the app. We need an action that gets a single directory because in our home page, we're gonna we're gonna show the list of directories, but what happens when the user clicks on one of them? The user wants to see more information about that directory. In order to do this, we're gonna create an back in action that gets a single directory from the database. And this is how it's gonna this is how you're gonna do it. So we're gonna click the back button and we're gonna create we're gonna click on the new action button. So let's call it get directory. Then click on the enter button on the keyboard. Then we'll click on add trigger endpoint. So as usual, Dirify gives us some default endpoint configuration. We don't really need to change anything. What we're looking for, the, the request method is correct. It's a get request because we want to get something from the backend. And so now, like I said earlier, when we get this information from the back end, from the database, we need to save this somewhere temporarily so the front end can have access to the information and use it as it sees fit. So 
in order to save the information that we get to the backend, we need to create a variable. Now, so we're going to click the add variable button. And what kind of variable um, are we going to need for this, for this operation? So we're just going to get a single row. Now, the kind of variable that matches this operation is called the model. So model is just single piece of information. You know, the row has multiple columns and the model is the best data type that suits the row. So we're going to call it directory. And, and then for the model, we're going to say, call it, we're going to select directory model. And then we're going to click save. And then the response variable, we're going to select directory. So the response that we get from the endpoint is going to be saved in the, in the variable that we just created. And then we're going to click build code so that Dirify can help us build the endpoints in the backend and set everything up.